There's a few exciting gaming news stories we have to talk about today, starting with the Pokemon Home app getting a very long awaited update that will finally go live today, and it will add some new functionality that fans have been waiting for. Then we also have to cover the Sonic Origins collection as there's a brand new gameplay trailer that does highlight some hype gameplay, but we also have to have that discussion around how Sega is handling this release. Then the big talking point for today's video has to do with the ongoing gaming subscription wars as Sony just recently unveiled brand new details around their multi tiered offering and we have to talk about one thing that they included that we really need to see hit Nintendo Switch Online in the future. What's up nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Sunburn Nation by subscribing below, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned guys, we got a few different stories we gotta get through today, and we have to kick it off with a conversation around Pokemon Home and a brand new update that is scheduled to hit the app today, and it will be adding in some functionality that Pokemon fans have been waiting for for quite some time. As if you're unfamiliar, Pokemon Home is essentially the updated version of Pokemon Bank for the Nintendo Switch family of systems. And one of the really cool and unique things about the Pokemon franchise that they've continued to support over the years is the ability to transfer forward Pokemon from previous games, which always adds to the fun of hunting Pokemon as most recently Pokemon Legends Arceus came out. And I will tell you guys that I cannot remember the last time I got that immersed in a Pokemon game and hunting all of the different Pokemon in the world was a fantastic experience. And now this new Pokemon Home update will now allow players to actually transfer all of those catches into Pokemon Home to essentially essentially roll them forward for future games or even transfer them into previous iterations that are supported. So you can first see the announcement tweeted out a little while back from the Pokemon company, which reads as follows. The Pokemon Home update you've been waiting for is almost here, trainers. You'll soon be able to link Pokemon Home with Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Pokemon Shining Pearl, and Pokemon Legends Arceus. You then had the follow-up to that tweet, which confirms the following, Pokemon Home will undergo planned maintenance starting on May 17th, 2022 at 5 p.m. PTD. Please note that Pokemon Home will not be accessible during this maintenance period. For more details, please refer to the mobile device version of Pokemon Home. So clearly just a good news announcement, especially if you are a hardcore Pokemon fan and have been keeping up with your collection of different Pokemon over all of the years. It is something that I will go in and actually hop in and check out this update once it, once it is live. I spent, I don't know how many hours shiny hunting in the Pokemon Let's Go games between Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. And I have a nice shiny collection that I definitely want to make sure is included in Pokemon Home. And hopefully I can roll those forward to future iterations of the Pokemon titles. I know there are paid services that are available as part of Pokemon Home. I'm not entirely familiar with what the difference is on what you get for being a paid member versus not, but I'll probably look into that now that this 2.0 update is right around the corner. And as we build up all of our hype and anticipation for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet launching later in 2022, this is a good time to go back and look at some previous catches along the way, especially from Legends Arceus. For whatever reason, I did not get near as into Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I will go back and give those games a fair playthrough, but 15 to 20 hours into Shining Pearl for me, me for some reason the hook was not setting maybe i just wasn't in the mood for that more traditional style pokemon game at that point in time there's still fantastic remakes but definitely not my favorite out of the bunch of other pokemon games that we've seen launch so far on the switch so i want to hear from you guys in the comments down below whether or not you're hyped for this pokemon home update to finally hit and if you are planning on doing any extra work with your pokemon library now that it will be live and share with me your favorite pokemon experience on the nintendo switch that we've had so far as obviously there's been plenty of games released at this point and share with me what you're most hopeful that we see implemented and added in in the future installments in Scarlet and Violet. So I do look forward to hearing from you guys and all things on this Pokemon Home update and your overall opinion of Pokemon and where it's headed going forward in the comments down below. Now, the next story we're talking about today has to do with Sonic Origins. If you guys have been around on the channel for a while, you probably know I have one or two major gripes with how Sega is handling the release of this game. But nonetheless, these are the classic pinnacle of 2D Sonic experiences, and I am hyped to replay them with things like native widescreen support, as we do know that that will be added in as part of the features of this collection for Sonic CD, Sonic 1, 2, and 3, and Knuckles. And so clearly, I'm still hyped for the collection, even though Sega is botching the launch in a big way, in my opinion. However, as we are getting closer and closer to its launch, we are starting to see new snippets of gameplay and updated trailers and things. And we got another one today that does remind everybody to be on the lookout for this release. And one thing that I will say very positive about the game is really the cool extra work that they put into the animation cutscenes. Apparently, there's going to be story portions where you have entirely new from the ground up created cutscenes to add context to what's going on in the story of these games as you progress through. If it's every boss or 
every few major bosses. I'm not sure what the progression of how many trailers and how many cutscenes will be added in, but I do think that that is a nice fresh addition to give some new life into old classic 2D games. And the big thing for me will be the anim anniversary mode playing through it that way because it's 16.9 native widescreen support, which might not sound like a huge thing on the surface, but one thing that really does bother me when I'm playing old retro games is those black bars on the sides, as even with things like Nintendo Switch Online, we are forced to play the games in just the four by three aspect ratio. And especially if you're playing in handheld mode, that is definitely cutting off a large portion of your display. And I'm not a fan of the stretched image either. So whenever the work actually gets done to go in to update the game to support native widescreen, that is a huge win for me. Now, clearly we have Sega essentially dropping the ball, in my opinion, with the launch of this game two things they're doing a digital only run which i am hopeful maybe in the future we get a physical release we did see sonic mania launch first digital only then later on got a physical release but i still don't want to have to buy the game twice and i definitely would pick this up physically as a physical game collector if it was an available option the issue number two, of course, is you're probably familiar with it at this point. There is literally an infograph of all of the different packs of how you should buy this game, because really what you have to do is pre-order it and get the deluxe edition. So you really get all of the content. Otherwise, they have individual DLC packs that may or may not add in that much extra functionality to the game. But regardless, why are you making pricing complicated for what should be just a simple $40 across the board collection of classic Sonic titles? That's definitely one thing that rubs me the wrong way when Sega tries to nickel and dime a classic collection like this and they release it digital only to boot when a lot of the target audience are probably like me and grew up being physical game collectors and they would probably prefer a physical edition of this collection so a couple gripes there with sonic origins regardless i am planning on playing through these games i'll probably make a video on it here on the channel because i have heavy nostalgia for the especially the 2d era of sonic games and then sonic adventure 1 and 2 and it gets kind of spotty from there but definitely have been a lifelong fan of sonic titles and i want a reason to hop back in and enjoy these classics again. I am hopeful that the Sonic 3 music soundtrack remains untouched and is the original soundtrack that we remember growing up playing, but we will have to wait and see what the situation is with that. But I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below whether or not you're planning on picking up the Sonic Origins collection, if you're hyped for the gameplay we've seen so far, and definitely share with me what your overall mindset is on how Sega is going about the launch for this game. Does it bother you like it bothers me, or are you just not really phased by it at all and you were only going to get it digitally anyway, so it's not a big deal to you? So please share all your thoughts and feelings on the Sonic Origins collection in the comments down below. Now, the last story we're talking about today has to do with online gaming subscription services. As if you haven't noticed, they are popping up on every major platform holder at this time. You have Xbox, of course, leading the charge with Xbox Game Pass, essentially trying to be more of a Netflix of game style where all of their first party major releases that you would normally pay 60 or $70 for are just going to be included as part of that service. And they're trying to make it worth their asking price. It then had up to this point in time, Sony's approach to this market with essentially just the PlayStation plus base tier allowing you for online play cloud storage and all the kind of features that we expect from like the nintendo switch online base tier subscription as part of that playstation plus subscription but they also gave you a few classic sony games per month mainly for the ps4 and just games that had kind of run their course on their own sales you would get three free titles added in each and every month as being a playstation plus subscriber then to the side of that they had what was called playstation now which is essentially a little bit more akin to an xbox game pass but more of like a nintendo switch online style service as it really targeted just to have a large library of classic Sony games all the way from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 4. And then most recently, of course, we got the official confirmation from Sony directly that yes, indeed, they are working on a multi-tier subscription service to essentially merge together PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus and create somewhat of a new experience. And this is kind of in the middle of what I would call a Nintendo Switch Online competitor and a Game Pass competitor because it really takes inspiration from both of the services in different ways. Sony's definitely stretching for a large catalog of somewhat recent titles to be added into the service, but also reaching back as far as their PlayStation 1 catalog and PSP games added in there. And there's one very unique thing that they are offering as part of their subscription service that I would absolutely love to see Nintendo implement and add into their service, because clearly not everybody is a fan of having an ongoing subscription that essentially you're never really buying what you are paying for. You are just having access to play it and you have to always be a subscriber to maintain that access and to get on the same 
same page with what Sony is offering as part of their new multi-tiered PlayStation Plus service, I do want to quickly hop over to VGC, read through all the details together, then talk about what we can hopefully see Nintendo acknowledge and do as a alternative purchase option for their classic library of games in the future. Sony has revealed some of PS Plus's new classic PS4 and PS5 games, plus users who have already purchased classic games will receive them at no additional cost. PS Plus's new extra and premium tiers will include a library of PS4 and PS5 games that will include Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Demon Souls, Ghost of Tsushima, Director's Cut, NBA 2K 2022, and more Sony said on Monday. In addition, the platform holder confirmed some of its PS1 and PSP games coming to its premium tier. First party titles include Ape Escape, Hot Shots Golf, and Siphon Filter, and third party games include Mr. Driller and Tekken 2. Sony notes that the list of games released on Monday, which can be seen below this article, contains a selection of games planned for the service. It previously said that PS Plus Premium Tier would include a library of over 700 games, including 400 downloadable PS4 and PS5 titles. According to Sony, select PS1 and PSP games will sport a new user interface with menus that allow users to save their game at any time or rewind gameplay. Also, players who have previously purchased the digital version of games from the original PlayStation and PSP generation will not have to make a separate purchase or sign up to PlayStation Plus to play these titles on the PS4 or PS5, it said. When these titles are released for PS4 and PS5, players can head to PlayStation Store and download a version for the consoles at no extra cost if they already own the digital version of the title. Some of the titles will also be available for individual purchase. Now, of course, it's the last part of that article that we read through together that I think is a really unique idea that I hope we see walking forward into the future across all gaming subscription services, because there is always going to be a drop off of fans that just simply are not a fan of subscription services. Once they have too many, they're not going to be willing to sign up for any more. And how do you get those users to still somewhat contribute in terms of revenue and purchasing new games for you? Give us a standalone option for purchasing these games that are already available as part of your subscription service on the one-off $5.99 or $9.99 price. If I really want to own Ocarina of Time on my Switch and not always have to be a Nintendo Switch Online subscriber to have access to play that, then I should have the option to purchase it since the work has already been done. It's already fully playable and available, but don't just lock it as the only way to play that game is through your ongoing subscription service. Also give us long-term hardcore Nintendo fans an option to purchase it standalone. If that is the type of title that we know, we are always going to want to have the access to play on the Nintendo Switch. It's essentially an idea that would merge a virtual console store layout and a subscription service together. Now you do have to have the conversation that if Nintendo were to ever implement a feature like that, would it actually harm the subscription rates or would it help it in some ways? Because if we really are talking about $9.99 per N64 game, while there is some people who were want to pay that price and just own the game, there are going to be others that sign up or get a brand new Switch for the first time and realize, hey, wait a minute, for 50 bucks for the entire year, I can have this large built out library of all of these NES, SNES and N64 games and you might get a subscription plus some side purchases of games that they really want to own going forward, as opposed to somebody just getting their fill of the games on the service and then just canceling and not renewing their subscription. So I think this is an interesting idea. It's one that obviously Sony isn't implementing across all of their games at this point, like the PS2 games are kind of left out of that conversation. So I wonder if they're just kind of testing the waters with this, but I want to hear from you guys at this point in the video about everything we talked about today and definitely around this last topic. Would you like to see Nintendo offer us some kind of individual purchase offer when it comes to Nintendo Switch online games in addition to the subscription service and definitely share with me your overall thoughts of what Sony is doing with their subscription services versus Xbox and now versus Nintendo and do you think they are kind of competing with each other or do you think they really are just core fundamental different services at the end of the day and it's not so much direct competition regardless so I want to hear from you guys regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today in the comments down below before you leave the video as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics go watch yesterday's video next if you haven't already where we discuss a very interesting nvidia job listing that's been listed online and mounting evidence that does indeed confirm that nintendo is in the working phases of releasing their next generation hardware also make sure you like subscribe turn on your notification bell and i will see you guys in the next video